Jeff Doctor of the National Indian Cannabis Coalition sits down and tells us about uh, growing up uh, as a Native American in the United States of America, uh, what, uh, where he's from and what he's doing now, and uh, very interesting conversation, so enjoy. So we're off and running here, and uh, we've got uh, Jeff Doctor from the National Indian Cannabis Coalition. Is that right? That is correct. All right. So right off the bat, I got a, a couple questions for you that we're going to have to tackle here. Okay. Jeff Doctor, we know that the cannabis is medicine. That it is. Jeff Doctor, is that, uh, is that a stage name? Or? <laughs> nope. That's my fam fa given family name. All right. For sure, yes. So this worked out all right. It did. All right. So now uh, National Indian Cannabis Coalition. And uh, as I, what's, uh, the person that's sitting in front of me is a Native American as far as I'm concerned. Correct. Right. So, but then we're the National Indian Cannabis Coalition. So we just need to tackle that right off the bat. Yep. No, I'm uh, originally from the Seneca Nation outside of Buffalo, New York. Um, grew up there. Um, been uh, living in North Carolina for a bunch of years. Yeah. Uh, after leaving New York State, went back to New York State and um, been involved with uh, Native issues for a bunch of years. Yeah. Uh, 2010 ran for United States Congress and then saw and kind of paid attention to this industry. I uh -huh. uh, got involved with the industry about two years ago. Uh -huh. And um, when I saw the DOJ memo came up, come out in, in December, I uh, just felt compelled to be able to put it, an organization together that represented tribes throughout the states and so that we can do this the right way. Shouldn't it be the NNACC? <laughs> <laughs> it could be yeah all right i just i like i try to keep up i try to do things right is all i'm saying understood let's talk about new york state i'm also from new york state okay. uh you're from uh much uh, farther north than i am though uh no we're all the way to the west oh excuse me all the way to the all west the way right to of the course west. i went to ithaca correct. college so i'm familiar okay. with did uh, you really seneca absolutely okay i almost had an opportunity to go to ithaca but i went to potsdam okay fair enough and then uh the turning stone uh, casino you'll know it's yes, in the I area do, the oneida nation yes all right. Yeah. But Seneca Nation, tell us what, uh, you know, where that is specifically and uh, what, what that experience was growing up as a kid. So that is uh, based outside of uh, Buffalo, New York, uh -huh. uh, about uh, 45, 50 minutes outside of Buffalo, New yeah. York. Northwest, east, south. Uh, more southwest. Okay. It's going toward the Pennsylvania border. Got it. But so kind of driving towards uh, Rochester, but away from it. Oh, yeah. Well, you're still past Buffalo, so you okay. got to get to Buffalo, yeah. and then you're, you're past it that, that way. Yeah. Um, it's a very rural area, uh -huh. you know, very, very, uh, you know, very, where basically it's in the uh, uh, Appalachians, so it's, it's still part of the mountain range over there. Okay. Um, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a very, there's, well, let me explain a little differently. So in and around Buffalo, there are three tribes of Senecas. Mm -hmm. There's the Tonawanda Band, which is north of Buffalo. Mm -hmm. There's the uh, Cataraugus Band, which is in, in, in the southwest. And then there's Allegheny. So that's even a little further west, even mm -hmm. more going toward the Pennsylvania border. So it's a very big uh, tribal community, but just very spread out. Okay. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's very community-based. It's, 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 it's very much within its own core mm -hmm. if, if you if you will um it's uh, everybody knows everybody yeah almost everybody's related to everybody okay <laughs> um, so it's a, it's a very it's a very close-knit community very uh w what's it like uh growing up i mean the, do, is there the feeling from within that there are two separate things going on you know outside of us and us and outside of us type of thing or yeah there there is um you know you we never grew up talking politics we never grew up talking about anything you know our, yeah. our concern was always um you know what's happening in the community what's going on you know with family what's that daily life it it's it's it, uh, it uh it was uh you know we didn't have a lot yeah so we just we never concerned ourselves outside of of community really okay you know, it's just uh you know it's just something that we were we just 
never really concerned yourself with. Right. It, you're, you're lo I'm looking at you and you're, you're saying it to me and you, you basically your face is saying, I, I can't say it any other way. <laughs> like we were fine. You know what I mean? Sure, we didn't have a lot, but we were fine. We were. Yeah. We you were. guys with all your things type of thing, right? <laughs> so wh when did you break out? You said you went down to North Carolina. When, when did that occur to you that you might want to be off of the, you know? So when I went to college uh, in 1990, um, mm -hmm. I was, it was, uh, you know, I wanted to get away and, and see what else was out there, mm -hmm. obviously. Um, and college really opened my eyes. Yeah. Um, going to Potsdam was a great, probably one of the greatest things that could have happened to me at that time in my life. Okay. Um, Why do you say that? Let me stop you. Just because, you know, we didn't travel much. Uh -huh. I never had really experienced a lot of things. Um, so college to me was just like... <laughs> Deer in the headlights. Yeah, like, sure. There's a lot going on there. You know, dump me off. <laughs> see you later. Figure it out. You know, my, none of my, nobody in my family went to college. Uh -huh. So they had, I had nothing to go on, nothing to base anything off. It was just, hey, here you are. Figure it out. Don't call us for anything. <laughs> so know? deer in headlights. What was most surprising to you? Was it just the, the everything coming at you type of thing? Um, you just have to assimilate yourself yeah. very quickly. Yeah. So I was put into my first dorm room was a, a six person suite. So you had, uh, so you had three bedrooms, community living room, yeah. community bathroom that you're sharing. I'm now I'm sharing with five other guys, you know, it's like, <laughs> which is fine. I grew up with two brothers. I'm the oldest, you know, I get it, but you know, but it's a, uh, it's, it's very, it was very different, you know, <laughs> and it, but it was a good different. It was, uh, you really learned to, um, yeah, just to mentor yourself in, in other people's, either whether it's their cultures, their views, you know, their interests. You know, it was just really, it was great to see. It was just truly, truly a, a learning experience for me. And, and then the independence part of it to know that you can uh, kind of create your own path and, 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 be in, and learn to be involved in different things and, and learn to create your own opinions and learn to... to um, just see what else is out there. It was it was it was just great on all those levels. It really taught me a lot of, of you know how to how to survive in the world. I guess. Yeah. No, that's uh, fascinating. And you mentioned community uh, growing up, but is uh, is it not uh, is there not a s strong sense of person or individuality um, growing up in in the community? In, in native community, yeah. there, it's it's not about the the individual at so, all. Not at all. It's it's all about community family um you know that's why we have tribal councils we have it's you we don't have just one elected official you mm -hmm. have multiple elected officials because um it's just been part of our our history um that one person shouldn't be making those decisions on mm -hmm. behalf of everyone it needs to be a collective okay all right yeah. interesting so uh you graduate with uh, what degree did you <laughs> to graduate with a degree in sociology okay um I actually put it to use for about a year and a half. I, I went to work on the uh, Mohawk, the Akwazasi Mohawk Reservation in New York State, which is completely directly north, in um, uh, right near the Canadian border. Okay, sure. Uh, so, what were you doing for them? So, I started working at um, their uh, women's shelter. I was doing domestic violence, working within the domestic violence uh, arena mm -hmm. on the reservation. There, um, did that for about a year and a half, almost two years. Um, created a my own pro uh, a program within the um women's shelter for men we yeah. tried to create a program that helped men get away from their uh, abusive uh, behaviors and whatnot so it evolved into that and then uh had an opportunity to go to north carolina in 1997 and visit some friends and again had never been down in the Charlotte, North Carolina area, um, or outside of New York. It sounds like, right? <laughs> a couple times, but not, okay. but not for a good length of time like that. And, right. Uh, and uh, it was just gorgeous. It was beautiful, and we just had the opportunity to uh, to go and explore. Um, fell in love with it. Huh. You know the temperature, the, the the beauty of the place, and uh, decided then that I didn't want to go back to New York State. Okay. So wound up staying. Um, at the time, I was dating my wife so she was along with me so we found both found a place to live within mm -hmm. 10 days found uh applied for jobs um figured we had them and uh we lived there for 15 years oh wow oh so you stuck around we stuck around yeah. we did and is that is, is that a girlfriend from uh, college from uh, is she native american is oh yeah so it? she's from the mohawk tribe oh she so, is okay so, I, so we were friends uh, throughout college she went to a different she went to oswego university uh-huh 
Um, and uh, but we knew each other, and then uh, we started dating when I was working on the reservation. Yeah. And uh, then she went down to North Carolina with me, and and uh, we decided to stay. Yeah. What were you doing for 15 years down there, Jeff? <laughs> um, a variety of things. Um, <laughs> I originally started working again in domestic violence. I worked for uh, uh, Mecklenburg County, which is the county that surrounds uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. Mm-hmm. Um, it, uh, I was working in there um, with uh, children uh-huh. of domestic violence through, through a county program. Did that for, again, almost uh, two years, and then uh, wound up working for uh, U.S. Airways. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. U.S. Airways begins with you, as you might know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> what were you doing for them? <laughs> I was a stewardess now. I was a flight attendant for them. Uh, let's be politically correct. Exactly. Here, so um, yeah, I was a flight attendant for almost six years. Oh, you were a flight attendant. Okay. Yes. All right. Yeah, I was. Because um, <laughs> during that time, we had a daughter. Uh, she was born in 1998. Huh. And um, us being so far away, uh, you know, we didn't have a lot to be able to get to see family a lot and you know it was uh i was trying to be creative and found a way uh they were doing a lot of hiring and charlotte's one of their hubs so yeah. i was just like all right take a shot and um got hired perfect and uh they were able to travel for free yeah. um go back to see my parents in buffalo or go see her folks and um so it really it was advantageous on both levels absolutely how long did you do that for uh almost six years okay yeah. all right because i know you're short on time so i'm trying to no kind of hurry this along a little bit more than we usually do but uh you know so six years so that's uh, six of the 15 so what about the other nine then i got into a uh, small business yeah. doing some small business stuff um some restaurants uh, some other kind of just small businesses within charlotte got to know the community a little bit got involved um, entrepreneurial type yeah just stuff. entrepreneurial stuff right. just small business stuff and um just took a couple shots of those just kind of learned my way around and never done anything like that before so yeah. i had the opportunity to do that um grew those and then i would sell them off do something else something else and then in 2007 i got asked to go to dc um as a favor to a friend to just kind of put people together okay and uh went up to dc i'd never really spent a lot of time in dc and then uh, uh after I'd put these two parties together, yeah. the one party from D.C. asked if I wanted to come work. And I was like, okay. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I'll take a job. <laughs> <laughs> but it was in the political arena, and they made me the director of their Native American Affairs Look at that. office. So um, it started going from there, and I started meeting a lot of people, doing a lot of different things. Um, and this kind of goes back to uh, growing up in com- as community-wise and not dealing, not talking about a lot of outside issues and this and that but now my wife and I living in another uh, non-native area um, we felt uh, it was important to make sure that our daughter had a good example and and, and got involved in, in, in different types of things and we you know we wanted to change that pattern mm-hmm. um, so working in DC it just kind of clicked with me a little more and then when the Obama campaign came along and you know the the wildfire I guess you say of you know what it was doing across the country and the momentum that it had and the yeah. piquing everyone's interest it was uh my daughter got involved with it in school you know it was such a big deal just in their school and watching how the campaigns progressed yeah. and um and then when he won we had an opportunity to go to inauguration we went to inauguration um spent a week there in dc which was really great and uh we're walking doing the tourist thing walking by the white house one day and my daughter goes dad why aren't you there and, and I just look at her, I'm like, how do you even answer that? Yeah. And I look at my wife and I'm like, where did that come from? And, and how, just, how old is she at that time? At that time, she was 10. Okay. She was 10. And, you know, it made, made me really think, how, do, how can I really be a better example? So about two months later, after thinking about it, talking with some friends in D.C. and uh, whatnot, uh, I decided to run for United States Congress. <laughs> okay. Never run for anything before. Just decided to, you know, Go big, go home, just do it. Let's just do this, Let's exactly. Do and um, so we got completely immersed in, in, in putting a campaign team, team together, um, put it together, made our official launch, and uh, got involved politically. But uh, So it, uh, it was a great example for my daughter. Um, it, it was wonderful. She was involved with it, obviously. We were yeah. all involved with it. Um, but it, it also propelled me in a different way throughout Indian country. I was... Um, you know, running for my district, but it kind of turned into a dual campaign in that I started going out doing national conferences and 
different things and people started to get to know what I was doing and I was kind of, you know, I had to kind of push my, or, you know, push my presence or push what I was doing, you know, mm-hmm. and my agenda. But um, uh, I got a lot of great support, made a great network within Indian country and, uh, and uh, it was, uh, it's kind of gotten me to where I am now with, with what we're doing in the industry. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's almost better for us uh, that you didn't necessarily win that campaign, <laughs> right? Uh, yeah. So, so talk about uh, the NICC, NIC as you call it, right? Yes, we call it, yeah, a nice little acronym, NIC. Um, uh, we, so the National Indian Cannabis Coalition is based out of Washington, D.C. We started in January. Um, we started going to our first Native National Conference in February. We've been to four or five different ones in these few short months. Mm-hmm. Um, we really um, are trying to advocate on the behalf of tribes and tribal leaders to give them the best information, whether that's policy and or operational. Mm-hmm. Um, as I said, us being in the business uh, beforehand and then seeing the memo come out, we just took it upon ourselves to feel that we needed to provide some a leadership voice in D.C. Mm-hmm. Um, as, as tribal governments and tribal nations, uh, it is we are sovereign, and we we we're, we're very different entities. Yeah, uh, you know our, our our town hall is in in Washington D.C. No, nope. you know it's 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 where our funding comes from. It's, it's you know everything we deal with is on a federal level. It's not the state level, mm-hmm. um, for the most part, anyways. And it's uh, we just felt there needed to be a national voice, national organization that was going to look out for the best interest of of. Indian country within the marijuana industry. And so what what is, uh, as you call it, Indian country thinking? You know, there there are obviously many different voices, as you're uh, saying right there, but uh, what is the overwhelming thought process here? What are we trying to do as Indian country, if you will? Well, our our goal is to is to it, it's obviously to listen to everybody mm-hmm. you know we have to listen to everybody every tribe every tribe is different we mm-hmm. have to understand and listen to what tribes and tribal leaders want for their different communities um, but we have to create a national platform we have to be able to be able to be regulated at some point i mean you know whether you feel so or not or other people you know i feel that it's going to go federal at some point sure and i think we have to be positioned to do that in Indian country, you'd like to be regulated federally? I think we can set up our own regulatory commission. This is what I'm asking. Yeah. Okay. How yeah. so? Uh, just working with um, the folks on, you know, in D.C., working mm-hmm. on those federal levels. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, at the moment, we're doing some work uh, um, on behalf of the some tribes with the CARES Act. Mm-hmm. And, and how do we... How do we plug and play tribes in that? You know, where where can you know? There's no mention of tribes in that bill as of yet. But mm-hmm. now that it's been introduced and it's going forward, you know, we're trying to advocate on that behalf. Where do we fit? Where does this come into as federal stuff? You know, mm-hmm. how do we how do we best position tribes? We want to be proactive about this. We want to be continue to have a seat at the table. We want to be on the forefront of this issue, and it's important to have that voice and. That's really what we're trying to do. It's an issue. It's also an industry. Is uh, you know how much of uh, the industry does uh, Indian country have uh, an interest in? I would imagine all of it. They do, but it, <laughs> it, but it's but again, it has to be it has to be done right. Yeah, um, and that's the other part component. We have to be able to put this together properly. Um, mm-hmm. So you know you 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 don't want to take away someone's sovereignty, or you don't want to do something wrong where it affects other tribal nations. It has to be. A collective, mm-hmm. kind of what I said at the, from the beginning. Yeah. It, everything is collective. You have to think of everybody. It's not just one individual tribe and what's best for them. You know, you you, you don't want to create chaos before the ball really even gets rolling. Yeah. You know? How uh, well do uh, the nations work with each other? On big on big issues, it they they do really well. I mean, mm-hmm. if you I'll give you an example, the there's the National Indian uh, Indian Gaming Commission. It's right. a federally regulated entity in D.C., and you have, I believe, there's 256 tribes mm-hmm. that have gaming. Mm-hmm. I think that's the number mm-hmm. um, throughout the United States. And, um, you know, it's, they've been working on this for since 1985, which is 
is that 40 years now? Sure. Yeah. So we, we did that so we can do this. It's uh, yeah. It's not quite uh, 40 years. It's 30 years. 30 years. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Right. My no, math was bad there. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> I, I almost didn't catch it. So. Seeing if you're paying attention. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, okay, so, so in essence, are we talking about uh, cultivation facilities going up all over the nation, uh, dispensaries uh, all over the nation, much like there are casinos all over the nation? You know that's a that's that's the question of the hour. It's it's I don't know that we've determined that yet. And there's some tribes that have gone forward. They've passed ordin ordinances within their tribes. Uh -huh. um, they are moving forward with some cultivation uh, facilities. Can you share that with us? Who, who and where? Um, it's okay if you can't. I don't know that they've. I know that it's continuing to work, so I'll just leave it at that I, for the moment. Might be within the community that that uh, <laughs> exactly. information is being shared. Fair enough. But so, so there is movement. There is some movement. Mm -hmm. There is some movement. But a lot of people are still taking the wait and wait and approach uh, stance at the moment. You know, wait and see. Yeah. yeah. Let's see. Let's see what really happens with this, and and, and how can. How is it going to work out? And, and I know some of these tribes are trying to do it. What are they waiting on and what are they seeing about? In other words, you know, wait and see how so. Um, I think one issue is economic viability, uh -huh. you know, and, and um, also how do those partnerships with, with uh, those within the industry, is that really going to work? Mm -hmm. How is it going to play itself out? Mm -hmm. um, uh, industry, nation, partnerships. Yeah. Interesting, right? Yeah. yeah. What do we do there? Because we didn't necessarily have to do that with gaming. Gaming is unto itself, right? Well, there, there had to be industry partners at the beginning. There, okay. there were, um, you know, and there's a history of things not getting done in the best practice. I'm so, aware of that. So yeah, so this is that's a big concern also mm -hmm. for our organization that those best practices are are you know put in place and 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 we learn from history. That's uh, certainly uh, goal number one, I would imagine. It is. I, it is. Always. In life and in everyone's life. How about that? True. We'll broaden it. Very good statement. Right. So, uh, okay, what, uh, you know, is there anything specifically that you're working on now other than knowledge uh, gathering, you know? Because it kind of sounds like you're, li you're on a listening tour almost. Well, we are, we are uh, working with uh, senior staff members in the Senate at the moment um, um making all those connections making making all those relationships um we already have some of those relationships so they know what we're doing mm -hmm. they know that we're there in dc they know what we're trying to advocate on we've sat with um a few senators already we've had um, um open dialogue about who we are they're very interested mm -hmm. they've directed us to their staff to say hey how do we yeah let's get serious about this we didn't know that this was out there and you know how, let's figure this out together. So it's been it's been a very open reception Excellent. up to this point, which is yeah, we're very pleased. All right, so am I. Uh, I would love to check in with you. Maybe it's June of uh, 2015 now. Maybe in six months' time, just sure. kind of see how it all goes. Uh, we do have uh, two final questions that we ask everybody, though. Okay. So I've got to ask you uh, one question before the last two is: What's in the peace pipe, Jeff? I need to know. What's in the piece? Is it cannabis or is it something different? Is it better? What is it? Oh, we'll have to bring it to a ceremony and let, it, let you figure it out for yourself. How's that? I'm going to take you up on that. I'm <laughs> taking you, you up on that. I hope you do. All right. Fair enough. <laughs> so uh, for anybody listening, I'll report back later or maybe I won't. <laughs> All right. So uh, what has most surprised you in cannabis? That's the first question. The second question is what has most surprised you in life? And so you've taken a unique path, right? But uh, first things first, what has most surprised you in cannabis to date? Man, that's a, wow. What has most surprised me? Um, But I don't even know where to start with that one. It's uh, you, you stumped me on that. All I, right. I, I don't now this is this will be interesting. Sure. What if we went to what's most surprised you in life? Would that be easier? The fact that I'm sitting here doing this. <laughs> <laughs> so that's both. That's both. Yeah, we I got mean, it. <laughs> I would have never expected to be anywhere in this industry or getting to this to be even to have this opportunity to yeah. to be involved in this space which but w i just have such a passion for indian country and indian and native people and, and and that just it's just always something that i've always believed in and always wanted to be doing whatever i can in some in some respect and fashion and the fact that i have the opportunity to be able to do that now at this point is just 
to me is just is a great thing. I can it's just it's wonderful. That, that's fantastic. But it does make me think that I should ask you, uh, as far as cannabis, you mm -hmm. know, cannabis use, uh, uh, f you know, among the nations, but the, is is it there? I I, I was uh, asking about the peace pipe, but you know. Um, you know, just like I, uh, you know, had a relationship with cannabis in college, um, what about on uh, nation grounds? You know, is it there or is it not type of thing? Yeah, there, there's been some studies done. Yeah. Where, you know, it's, you know, it goes to any type of substance abuse, okay. you know, issue. Right. Whether it's native, non-native, um, you know, any ethnicity or any culture. Okay. It's there, you know, it's, it's real. It's been a part of, you know, it's part of life. Okay. Yeah, so, but uh, I think we bring, you know, part of also what we do is a big educational component and how this can, you know, hopefully affect the community in a better way. In a positive way. Yeah. That's exactly right. Yeah. All right. So uh, the thing that's most surprised you is just that you're sitting here. Yeah. All right. It really is. All right. So then the next time I see you, you and I will be sitting there with the peace pipe. How about that? I'm looking forward to that. Jeff Doctor. <laughs> Thanks so much so, for your thank time. Thank you so much. All right. So there you have it. Jeff Doctor. National Indian Cannabis Coalition will certainly be keeping in touch with him and uh, find out what happens with uh, him and the community and kind of moving forward together. So, hope you enjoyed the conversation. And again, we'll certainly check back with Jeff. <laughs>